I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins from Your Black World, and um, I um, I had I had a thought that I wanted to share. Uh, yeah, as you know, <clears throat> I tend to talk when um, something just comes to mind that I think people can benefit from. Uh, it was a conversation I had with a young brother the other day that I thought could be uh, beneficial to other people, uh, young and old, male and female. Uh, I was talking to, uh, I happened to be talking to a male in that particular context, but I can think of similar conversations I've had with young ladies. So I'm going to share this with you and I hope you'll bear with me. I hope it helps you. Um, I was talking to them about uh, being careful about who you let into your life. Uh, a lot of people, when they talk about building wealth, they talk about being successful, they talk about getting there, wherever there happens to be, but they don't understand that sometimes getting there requires that you uh, don't be sort of pull yourself down uh, with unnecessary, unhelpful, or perhaps a life-destroying baggage. And uh, baggage might be, um, a lot of times it comes in relationships. Uh, it could be marrying the wrong person, dating the wrong person. It could be choosing the wrong friendships, going into business with the wrong people. Um, in, in the case of men, for example, in, the, in this particular context, when I was talking to his young brother, I was talking about just women in general. And I said, look, when you start making money, when you when you become successful, uh, you're not going to have a shortage of women that will uh, that are going to look you over. They're going to be, you know, sort of. Uh, that might find you appealing. In fact, I, I was always fascinated by how I suddenly became more handsome when I had more money and had a PhD and I was on TV and stuff like that. And I was like, wait a minute, I'm still the same same dude I was before, but but people judge you differently and it, it happens. It's, it's part of life. Um, and um, and one of the things that that uh, that always stuck with me was I remember um, hearing from uh, certain people in my life, particularly my father, who just kind of warned me about that kind of stuff. In, the, in, in, in that particular case, he was talking about when I when I got my job at Syracuse University, and just being honest, he said, "Don't he said, don't you f nothing on that campus, don't f nothing on that campus." And and um, and I remember years later, uh, and I never did. I never, you know, my students. I looked at my students like they were children. I didn't care if you were 23, 24 years old. You came in my office, even if I'm 30 and you're. 24 you're my student I'm your mentor I'm not supposed to be trying to holler at you and touch you and look at you and all this other stuff now mind you I'm a heterosexual man I mean I, I don't pretend to be anybody's saint in the sense that I know what a beautiful woman looks like I know what a sexy woman looks like uh, now black women happen to be the, the most sexy or the sexiest women on the planet uh, but uh, you know in general you know I, I, a sister when a sister looks good believe me I know this even if I don't say anything so don't think that I'm pretending to be anybody's saint because uh, uh, I, don't, I don't I'm not even trying to get on that pedestal but what I am here to say though is that um, one thing I figured out is that if you're a man and you want to uh, spend time with women, there are plenty of women you can meet who don't work with you. There are plenty of women you could, I can meet as a professor who were not students in my class. And uh, it all came to a head a few years later when there was a professor on our campus at Syracuse who got into a whole lot of trouble because he was sleeping with a student in his class. And uh, not only uh, was did he have to deal with the shame of sleeping with this student and having everybody know about it, but uh, she accused him of sexual misconduct or something like that. I didn't know what that was. I was like, is that is that rape? Like, what is that? Um, but they had this brother's face in a mugshot on TV. TV like he was OJ Simpson and I remember thinking wow you know this guy worked his whole life to achieve all these things and he messed it all up by making a bad decision now did he commit the crime that the girl accused him of I don't know all I know is that he was not I don't even think he was indicted let alone convicted but I know that his reputation was tarnished and uh, and and I do know that there does appear to be a lot of evidence that they did have a relationship while she was taking his class and so even if he didn't commit the crime, the fact is he, he, he made a very bad choice uh, by even risking it all by choosing to allow his penis to do his thinking for him. And so what I say to young brothers is don't let your, you know, just being quite frank, don't let your dick do all the all your thinking and all your talking. That's not a smart way to live. There are so many powerful men, so many amazing men who've done amazing things in this world where they were brought down by sex. They were brought down because they wanted to mess with the jump off, you know, for a couple of days or whatever. And, I, and I'm, I've seen guys, you know, again, I don't know exactly what happens in people's bedrooms and all that. But, you know, I've known guys who will swear up and down that they were falsely accused of rape uh, from a girl that they barely knew. But they were thinking about the fact that, hey, I'm, I'm famous or, hey, I got a little bit of money. I got a little swag. The girls like me. Um, I'm going to go hit this and then move on. Well, sometimes people have other plans. Sometimes you know, for, for, especially when, when I talk to guys who are on the verge of becoming well-known or, or highly respected, 
I tell them like, look, you might think that you're only in this woman's life for a day, but you might be the best thing that ever happened to her. She may not want to let go of that. So you might walk in and think, okay, I'm going to step right back out. And a lot of women might be cool with that. A lot of women, they just want to say they slept with a famous guy or whatever. But there are some women, if you go through, if you if you meet up with 20 women, you're going to have at least one or two in there that are going to be like, oh, wait a minute, you're not going to do me like that. Uh-uh, I will destroy you. I will take down everything you worked for for the last 10, 15, 20 years uh, because you're not going to treat me like a blankety blank or whatever. And so, um, and I think the same thing is true for women. I think that, uh, you know, if for women, it tends to be more likely that they get in trouble over love, but sometimes sex can get them into trouble too. Too. But I just think in general, uh, you know, for, for, for mothers who are watching, you got to warn your sons about this, especially if they're athletes or going into something that is going to make them appealing to women. Uh, messing around with the wrong woman or the, or in the, the, with the wrong partner in the wrong situation can lead to a lifetime of misery. Um, in fact, that was the premise behind uh, my book, Financial Lovemaking. That was why I wrote that book was because I noticed how many people destroy everything in their life over a bad relationship. Like, you know, I talk a lot about in the Black Wealth Boot Camp, which we're launching in July, which you can find out more about in my website, boycewalkins.com. Uh, in the Black Wealth Boot Camp, you know, I talk about wealth building in terms of money, uh, entrepreneurship, things like that. But the thing is that uh, if you've got too many distractions in other areas, you can't build wealth because you're too busy trying to put out fires in your personal life. Uh, you know, so uh, that's all I really want to say. You can make of it what you want. Uh, I'm trying to just be honest here in terms of sharing my thoughts and my advice. And uh, and I, I guess I share this too because I talk a lot with my kids about this. And when I say my kids, I'm talking about my adopted kids, my biological child, but the kids that I mentor. I talk to all of them about things like this because I think these are important uh, conversations to have with your children. Uh, that who you let into your life can be the most important decision you ever make. It can be the most destructive decision you ever make. So you have to be very careful. Vet people out before they come into your space, especially if you've got a lot to lose and they've got nothing to lose, uh, those are the situations that I've seen uh, end in disaster the most. And so, again, I'm, I'm not standing here as a saint. I'm not finger wagging the people that make mistakes. I'm not doing any of that stuff. So don't even don't even think I'm trying to do all that holier than thou stuff. I don't do that. I know sex is real. I know sex, people want it. Sex is the reason that you're here watching me right now is because somebody out there was fucking at some point in the past. So I'm a realist about what human beings do and what human beings want. So uh, we're not getting on all of that. But what I am here to say is that you want to do your best to be smart or as disciplined as you can about at least being very careful about who you let into your space because you let that wrong person into your space that those one or two nights of passion and pleasure and all this other stuff that you might be seeking could lead to a lifetime of misery it can cost you everything i've seen it happen a million times and uh, i think people should just kind of think about that a little bit so that's all i just want to say i'm dr boyce Watkins from your black world until we meet again please stay strong be blessed and be educated once again if you're interested in the black wealth boot camp you can find out more at my website boycewatkins.com it's not free because it, it, it's an intense uh set of lectures that we do on wealth uh you'll get personal interaction with me stuff like that so it's not free so don't come in there thinking it's going to be more free stuff i give away a lot of free stuff but at some point i gotta pay some bills so this is my online class i hope you'll join us uh until we meet again stay strong be blessed and be educated i am I'm gone. Peace.